Yeah. We give our ID and we give the love the civilian card to show that police, we ain't here to make it hard for you. Do your job, find out I ain't got a gun, find out I ain't trying to kill you, but then respect me. Because I'm a civilian and I'm a citizen and more importantly, I'm a human. And we're not here to be sacrificed no more. Amen. If we have to defend ourselves, we will. Do not force the hand of God's hand. That's what we stand as black men. Amen. Say your name. Say your name.
point is, is this. The movement continues. The movement it continues. We're not here for a moment. Each and every one of us can point out a brother or sister that we're standing on their shoulders. They motivated us, they inspired us, they pushed us to do what we're doing today. Each and every one of our lives are precious. And each and every person that we stand on the shoulders of is precious. It may be your grandmother. It may be your grandfather. It may be a brother or a sister. It may be someone that you looked up to. Whoever it is, that person pushes us. That person pushes you. And George Floyd's assassination have done exactly that. So at this time, say his name! George Floyd! Say his name! George Floyd! Say his name! Thank you to Vision for having me come out here today. It's an honor to be able to recite this poem um, in honor of George Floyd, George Perry Floyd Jr., man, father, and a member of his community. This is for George, and this is for his family, and this is for us, and this is for our community. The poem is titled, A Song for a King. George Perry Floyd, Jr. How many years does it take to make a king? You were a king from birth. I can imagine young George Floyd learning how to use his God-given powers. How to live like a king. How to inspire like a king talk and walk like a king, how to reason and deliberate like a king, how to love like a king. Thoughts you probably thought daily. You shared your greatness with your children, not just a king but a father, shared vision and hope in words spoken, dreams that you dreamt they will now live out for you. Your kingdom lives on. Your kingdom is strong. Millions upon millions of people around the world rooting for your kingship to change the laws of the land. Your power lives on. We had to let pain transform into purpose. Memories like seeds for tomorrow. George, you have built a lasting empire of change. You did it. You changed the world. You did it. You changed the world. Eyes open that were once closed. This fight is not finished, but now there's newly open doors. You held your head high. You're a king. You love like a king. Giver of joy, you're a king. You walk this earth like a king. You learn how to use your power. Now we stand here, hearts full of love. It's more than hashtags and t-shirts. Our hearts broke when you stopped breathing. Screaming, I can't breathe! It can't just be about hate and pain. Black men's lives matter. George Perry Floyd Jr.'s life matters. Black lives matter. It has to be love over everything. Your name will now signify freedom. Your name is a freedom song, a song of freedom, a song of freedom, a song of freedom. I can't breathe. Your last words are still reverberating through the earth, shaking us, moving us through your pain and your love. His story is still being made and this work is not done. So we will keep working, and you just rest in power. George Floyd! Say his name! George Floyd! Panama.
imagine it's been a year out in these streets where we see the civil rights movement resurgence, where we see the parallels of the 60s revised. Can't believe it's only been a year. We look around at all these states and the ratification our protesting and demanding has brought. Closures of the police departments, defunding of police departments, but the reality remains. Innocent black lives, innocent male lives remain being slain in the streets. The reason the world came to the call when George Floyd suffered as a victim of government sanctioned killing is because so many countries can identify with government sanctioned killing. When his knee hit his neck, it resonated on a global level because police brutality is not exclusive to American issues. The reality is, the government wants to tear apart, destroy the manhood, so they destroy the family and the stronghood of a people. They not ready. Don't be deceived. Open your eyes and don't focus on mainstream media news outlets because they censor and camouflage the white supremacy that entangles this society today. Our movement cannot be a moment and it cannot die in the streets. But we must take to the streets, in the valleys, in the mountains, in the ranges, the one lanes, the two lanes. We need to occupy everything because this shit belongs to us. We the people are the foundation and the core of this planet. We the people are the foundation and the core in this nation. And it's not until we open our eyes and realize that our fundamental responsibility is to own that role as a person. So we must stand together as people in a human race. We must stand and once and for all in this civil rights movement and bring forth transformative justice, bring forth political disruption, bring forth the truth. For so long, the facade of a so-called reality and capitalism has overwhelmed us in society. But it's time that we say enough is enough. It took a medical pandemic to let the rest of the world know that we're suffering. Yes, Meanwhile, as black and brown members are living in a pandemic, just trying to stay alive, one called police brutality. One without any vaccine, one without re any remedy other than love connecting and recreating what it means to be a community. Each and every one of you remain the reason this fight is not a moment, but a movement. When we move together, we shut shit down together. We cause them to think. We cause them to panic. Why? Why do we cause them to think? Why do we cause them to panic? Because on a day-to-day -day basis, the trans community, the black community, the brown community, the Palestinian community, the Colombian community, black Brazilians live in a state of panic. In a state of constantly thinking, is this going to be the night that I die? Police officers say, you don't know how dangerous it is to deal with a traffic ticket. But I tell those police officers, you don't know how dangerous it is dealing with any police officer in any situation. Say an officer has a bad day. Is that the day they're going to kill you? The day they beat their wife before they put on that badge to come to work? Is that the day they're going to beat you? We should not have our safety rely on unconditioned, underqualified, and undertrained over-emotional human beings. 
Our policing should rely on us, the communities, and we should establish the rules and the realms of our policing. Not on an institution that came from slave catching in order to maintain the status quo and suppress the black and brown communities. No more. Not in Los Angeles, not in New York, not in Minneapolis. No more. Not in Gaza, not in Colombia, not in Brazil. No more. So say his name. 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 And let that name remind you that was the day so many people woke up. But hey, we got a guilty conviction. We got Biden in the White House. So people said, hey, everything's going to be okay. But let me remind you, before there was a Trump, before we knew police officers could be charged, they were still killing us in the streets. So, until we can get justice, there will not be peace. So we will take to the streets any time to speak out about everything because we have a zero tolerance for innocent deaths. We have a zero tolerance for corrupt policing. We have a zero tolerance for police brutality. It's time we unite as a people. So say his name. Say his name. Remember, you the people are the power and thank you. You're the change you want to see. We're here for George Floyd. George Floyd. George Floyd. George Floyd. We're all living in a time of change. The time to believe that love is the key. The love is the answer. We're all born of one nation, one race. We have to see that the system is broken. We need our men to be at home with our families. We don't need to be worried about police brutality. We don't need to worry about if we're going to make it home at night, being pulled over. We have to see that we need difference. We need the ability to believe in the power of love in each other. And that George Floyd is, a, is the change and the revolution of this movement. And that's the main focus of today. Hello, everyone. I'm Kendrick. How y'all doing? <laughs> Yeah, I've been out here a year now. It started with George Floyd, you know. I don't, hey, how you doing, Tanasi? Yeah, I don't really like, I don't really like being violent, you know. I don't, it's just, you know, I'm born and raised in LA. I've been dealing with the LA, LAPD know my fucking name. I've been dealing with them all my life. I've been in jail, all that, you know what I mean? They take advantage of the law. They act like sometimes they act like, yeah, you know I mean, oh, the sergeant told us to put the gate or sergeant really don't be telling them that. They do that on their own. I'm out here, I'm out here because no matter what we do, I could go home right now. <laughs> I could tell, I could just tell everybody, hey, let's go home. They could probably gun me down. They probably gun me down the next day. No matter what we do, I could go to work. I, I quit my job. I ain't been to work in a year since George Floyd. I don't care about that job. I really don't. Yeah, you know I mean, when it when it comes to black skin, y'all you know I mean, everybody should be out here. It should not just be a few. It should be everybody. Because that's why the police keep riding around here looking at us. Because they like, look, if, if if nobody care in this community, why shouldn't we stop killing them? If, if they not about to push the issue, if they not about to push the issue of us. Holding our holding our knee on a black man neck for eight minutes, they not gonna trip off that? Oh, oh yeah, it's go time. It's go time. It's go time, cause I'm a soldier at war. If you hear, you hear me now? I'm a soldier when it comes to black skin. 
in any race. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm with love. Love is the answer. But you think the police follow love, law? No, they got their own law, love. Holding you down for, till you can't breathe as they love. Shooting at you and ain't even knowing it's you. Is they love. Mistaken identity. I knew like like five or six black men that was in jail for mistaken identity. But they get money when they get out because, oh, it was a mistake. Come on now. Come on now. They know what the fuck they do. They know what the fuck they do. I was a, uh, what? I was 15 years old coming from um, the, the library. The police said I fit a description of a 28 year old man. I was 6'2". At 17, I was like 6'2", so I'm tall, you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? They put the shotgun on me, all that. Shotgun, they had the nine on me. I'm a little boy. I don't even know what lock your fingers is. They said, lock your fingers or we gonna shoot you because they're supposed to be on site. What is lock your fingers? I don't know what you're talking about. And they think I'm playing dumb when I really don't know what lock your fingers is. So I can feel a, I can feel a barrel on the back of my head. They like, if you don't stop playing and lock your fingers. And my mom ran up and pushed the officer like, please, he's not a criminal. He's nothing, he's a little boy. This is my son, whoop de whoop. They didn't care. They grabbed my mama and threw her on the car. They threw my mama on the car for trying to protect me. So how you think I feel? My mama raised me, I ain't have no father. But I went, I got three kids, most of y'all know, you know what I mean? I got three kids. I'll go to war for my kids, you know what I mean? Because that's how I act. That's all we got is each other. You know? That's all we got. So, uh, say his name. George Floyd. 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 Thanks. All love. Part of the struggle that they do not want you to fucking have. They don't want you to have joy. And that's why I focus on music so much. That's why I focus on safety so much because they want me to be in danger. They want me to feel alone. And that's how I know they want everybody else to feel. So I want to emphasize those things, you know? Like when it comes to unity, put your interpersonal stuff aside. Focus on conflict resolution. Focus on nonviolent communication. Like, focus on the things that are going to help you, not just as a protester, but as a human being, so that you can have the most influence as possible with helping to fucking black liberation. Because without black people being free, none of us are going to be fucking free, okay? Let, let's be clear. Without black liberation, there's no liberation. Can you repeat that? Without black liberation, there's no liberation. 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 So let's be clear on that. Put your personal shit aside, you know, so that you can be a better person for the fucking movement. We fucking need you. Stand the fuck up. Where the fuck is your head at? Let's do what we do. As soon as this light turns red, the intersection is ours, people. We take the streets as we always do. The same time that they killed, assassinated George Floyd, that's how long we're gonna be at this intersection. Say his name! George Floyd! Say his name! George Floyd! Say his name! George Floyd! Street! Oh, street! Oh.